Hey, what's up everybody, Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a party strobe in Adobe Premiere Pro. It's gonna look a little something like this. And so that is what we are creating today. Now you'll notice that we have a couple of neat little things in here. The first off is that we have it affecting only the light areas and it's very, very subtle at the beginning. And then with a drop, we can actually turn it up a little bit and make it, you know, feel like an actual party might. Another really neat thing here is we can actually toggle on some random footage like this uh, Japan, all of us going into a temple and it works with it as well. So this is a very versatile effect. So let's get started on the effect. First things first, we need to go ahead and create ourselves a new sequence. We need to drag our footage into that sequence. We're gonna keep the existing footage just because this is actually a little bit of a wider angle than typical. So I don't want it to create a weird sequence here. And I'm just gonna zoom it in to make sure that it fits a little bit. So there we are. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to add on that strobe effect. To do that, we need a black video. So if we go into our bottom left, into our project tab, there's this little leaf down here. We're gonna go there, we're gonna look for black video. It's gonna automatically set it to the sequence settings. Click OK, and let's go ahead and rename this. We'll name it light uh, bar, sure. And so now we're going to take this light effect, drag it on the top here, and you'll notice that the black video is doing as advertised. It's just a black video. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add that strobe effect on. If we go into our effects, we're going to look for strobe. Strobe light right down here. We're going to take strobe light and put it onto the black video, the light bar effect. And now if we play it back, you'll notice that we're getting just that, a strobe light, a white, uh, white to black, white to black. And we could change this color and it'll go, you know, blue to black, blue to black. We could take the, the uh, blending mode of this top layer of this and make it screen and then blend it with the original a little bit. And this sort of works. It, but the only problem here is that it's actually screening the entire thing. So the white is being applied to everything, which doesn't look too realistic. It makes it look like it's amateurish, like we're literally just placing color on and off. We want it to look a little bit more organic than this. So instead of screen, we're gonna go with color dodge. And color dodge will make it so it's only affecting essentially the highlights here, and it affects the lighter tones more than it affects the darker tones, which is how light reacts, and therefore it immediately looks more realistic. With this, however, we want to make sure that the light isn't too intense, so that's what the blend with original is going to do. If we go all the way to the left, it's just overwhelmingly bright. All the way to the right, it's off. So we have the ability to control how bright we want the lights to go. So that's our first step. So now we have the light actually coming in. Let's now color that light. Now you might think taking this strobe and animating the color over time would work, but I don't know if it's a glitch or if I'm using it wrong, but if I animate this, it only sticks with the very beginning color. So that's not the way that we can do this. So what we're gonna use instead is we're gonna search for an effect called HLS, and it's gonna be under Video Effects Color Correction, Color Balance HLS. We're gonna put that on the black video or our light bar layer here. Scroll down up in the effect controls and we'll see it down here. Now, the hue and saturation won't actually change the color of the strobe unless we give it a color. Reason for this is because what it's doing, what the hue and saturation essentially is doing is it's taking this bar and it's moving it. But if there's no color to actually be changed, it's gonna be white the whole time. So that means we just need to select any color here. We're just gonna go select a color on the right and now you'll see that if we move this bar, this area, goes up and down as well. If you wanna make it like a lighter color palette, you can do that and it'll move with those brighter sort of colors like so. I'm gonna make it a deep color though. Click OK. And now the hue and saturation allows us to change the color of the light. And now you can already see that it's looking pretty cool. What we're gonna do is go to the very beginning of the footage. We're gonna set the hue keyframe on. Then we're gonna to move to wherever we want it to end. Let's say that we want the effect to go for 10 seconds. We're just gonna drag it forward a whole bunch of times. Maybe if we wanna do something exact, we could have it like go to 10, and that means it's gonna rotate through the entire thing once a second. Uh, that might be a little extreme, so I'm actually gonna bring it down to five. So every two seconds, it'll go through the entire color palette. And now if we play this back, you can see the colors are changing and it's looking pretty realistic. So the next thing we need to do is now that we have this set, we need to set it 
the beats to a song and then actually make it sort of link up with that song. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this song, the one that we used, into this footage. And right now it's a little bit loud for me to be talking over it, so I'm going to just drop it down to maybe minus 14 here, and that way I can talk and listen to the music at the same time. So if we play it back. It's maybe a little bit in beat, but it isn't how we want it to be. So what we need to do is we need to find the beats per minute of this. A good website for finding BPM is actually this website, getsongbpm.com. You can drag your file in, which you see I've dragged it in here, just drop it right there, and it'll give you the BPM, making this analysis just a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and go into our effects. I know this to be 125 effect controls. We're gonna go up here and we're gonna go to the strobe duration. And this is what we wanna set it to. So we're gonna take whatever the BPM of this is and we're going to take 60 and divide it by that BPM. This is essentially saying we have a minute long, 60 seconds, and we wanna know how many times that this is going to beat within that 60 seconds or per second. We wanna know how many beats per second. To do that, we take 60, divide it by the BPM, and we get that number. 60 divided by 125 gets us 0.48. And so now, if we go into the light bar, we need to make sure the strobe duration is less than this number so we can make it something like 0.38, and I'll explain that in a second. Now, it's going to be on beat. And there you go, so we got a good start there. Now, what is this strobe duration seconds? You might think that this is how long the strobe is on. So if I made it, for example, 0 0.01, you would think that the strobe would be tiny little flashes. However, it actually works inverse. The strobe is the lack of color, not the, the actual amount of color. So instead of the strobe duration, what we wanna do is we wanna make this 0.38. And that means that this is going to be about 0.1 seconds between, uh, it's gonna be on for 0.1 seconds. And that looks a little bit more realistic. We can make this a little bit longer too. We could take this and we can make this 0.28 and that means there's gonna, it's gonna be on for 0.2 seconds per hit. And that's cool because it allows us to have that slight hue change during each one of them. And so yeah, let's go ahead and stick with that. So that is basically the strobe effect. Now, how do we make it drop, you know, per se, where it starts off really light and it goes heavy? To do that, we need to do an animation on our blend with original. Remember how this was the controller of how strong it is? Well, we can animate it to control how strong it is. So first off, we need to just find that drop. So let's listen in. Right there, that's the point where the, the music drops. So we wanna go ahead and create a keyframe here. So if we go into strobe light, go to blend with original, drop that keyframe. Let's make, let's make it go down to maybe about, let's go maybe 41%, 42, somewhere around that range. And that's the sort of the extreme of this. And then if we move backwards, maybe five or so frames, I'm holding the shift key so I can jump five at a time. We're just gonna move forward or back just a little bit and then drag this back up to a lesser value. And what this is essentially doing, if we zoom in on these keyframes, is everything before this is gonna be that really light color. Then right before it drops, it's gonna ramp it up. And on that drop beat, it's gonna be up at max. So that is the change right there. And now if we listen to it. It does the drop perfectly and we have that really neat audio right there. That is it for the effect. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and subscribe button. I make a video every other day, or at least I try to. Thanks everyone for watching, and until next time, guys, see ya.